The next uh, macromolecule that we're going to look at are uh, lipids, and they're just like carbohydrates, and they too are comprised of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. However, one of the differences, we looked at the carbohydrates, and the carbohydrates had a lot of hydroxyl groups around it. However, with lipids, lipids have pretty much mostly hydrogens bonded around the carbon. And, and one thing, for those who understand the chemistry, um, the carbon-hydrogen bond is considered a very non-polar bond. Right? So non-polar bond. So in other words, lipids are considered insoluble. And because they're non-polar, they are insoluble. That's supposed to be an N. In, oops, insoluble in water. So lipids, which are different from um, the simple sugars, the simple carbohydrates. Um, so sugars, simple sugars are soluble. Lipids are considered insoluble in water. Now, there is pretty much um, a lot more chemical energy available in lipids than there are in carbohydrates. And pretty much uh, they're actually used by animals as really the major storage molecule. So, so pretty much lipids are also known as fats, right? Are pretty much the major source of, of stored energy for animals, right? We, we, we build fat around us and that's our source of energy, right? Our, our backup energy for when the time comes. Right now, however, we said that pretty much lipids are insoluble in water. However, lipids are actually soluble in other so-called nonpolar compounds, and so these lipids are actually soluble in oils right? and other nonpolar um, solvents. Should I say? Right? So in terms of um, lipids, right? lipids can include oils, they can include fats, they can include waxes, uh, phospholipids that are found in the uh, cell membrane, as well as in steroids. So let me just give you that list here. Uh, let's change the color here. So pretty much lipids, as we have here, fats, uh, pretty much your oils, we've got um, waxes, Phospholipids, all right, phospholipids and steroids. Okay, and as we said, one of the reasons why they're insoluble in water is because there's mostly um, hydrogens, right? So now, oils and fats are really made up of specific types of lipid molecules called triglycerides. And down here, we're going to scroll down here, and I've got pretty much four different subunits of these triglycerides. One subunit that we have here is our glycerol. Glycerol, OL, meaning alcohol group or hydroxyl group, right? And this here that I'm trying to square out, invisibly square out, is our glycerol. And that's one of the four subunits. The other remaining three subunits are three fatty acids. And these are the fatty acids. And, it, and the thing is with these, we've got carbon, hydrogen, um, homologous series, right? Just a bunch of C, right? A whole bunch of Cs, right? Carbons bonded just with hydrogens around it. So we've got this big long link of carbons and hydrogens all the way. So this is what we call pretty much our nonpolar ends. Another thing that we have with um, these fatty acids is it has a carboxyl group. And here is the carboxyl group. And the carboxyl group uh, we have here at the end is with the carbon double bonded to an oxygen, which is single bonded to an OH group. And this is what we call our hydroxyl group. And, and pretty much that hydroxyl group is very important in the fatty acid as well as this uh, hydroxyl group 
in the glycerol because if you were if you recall and if you watched the video on the um, the carbohydrates when we we're putting together the um, uh, the disaccharide notice here how I drew the OH and then this H in blue because what's going to happen is we are going to lose water right so this is what we call also a dehydration reaction so we're gonna have a dehydration reaction again and what we're gonna do is we are going to remove one water another water and another water so in total when this bond forms this triglyceride forms we are going to remove three molecules of water and let me erase out um, these, uh, these, this H and the OH, this H and the OH, this H and this OH. And all of a sudden we're going to extend the bond because now there's a bond available here. There's a bond available here and that bond will form here as such. Uh, it's supposed to be a single bond. Sorry for the messiness here. So that bond is what combines here the one glycerol with the three fatty acids to form what we call triglycerides. Okay. And pretty much these are the lipid molecules that make up oils and fats. All right. So in order to form this triglyceride, just to kind of recap, we combine the glycerol molecule with three fatty acids by removing water through a process called dehydration. And as we said, it was combined with the carboxyl group that we had here with the hydroxyl group that was here and we removed the waters. Now to, uh, to kind of expand on these triglycerides, right? So we've got different types of triglycerides. First type of triglyceride that we have are what we call saturated triglycerides. Triglycerides, sorry for the messy writing. Uh, triglycerides, and these are what we call pretty much our saturated fats. And the carbon, carbon, bonds that the the main homologous series that occur are all single bonded so the thing with saturated think saturated think single right single bonds right so we have pretty much all carbon carbon single bonds big long chain and so what we have it, when we're looking at saturated triglycerides we have this homologous series here these are all single bonded carbons all right so now what we can have though is we can have pretty much something called unsaturated right unsaturated tri glycerides and these unsaturated can actually contain double bonds whether it be one whether it be two or more so along in this carbon carbon we might have a double bond in it and this double bond or maybe another double bond uh, is what uh, what actually forms pretty much kinks in the triglyceride so we're gonna have our triglyceride I'm gonna draw our glycerol glycerol group here and remember the three fatty acids right that are in a, in a chain right however with unsaturated triglycerides we actually might have kinks in the the um, in the fatty acids so all of a sudden now we form pretty much um, these changes, right? Um, that actually create a lower melting point. And these are pretty much considered oils at room temperature. So these are liquid oils at room temperature. Now many plants, right? Uh, such as pretty much sunflower, right? Sunflower plants, uh, what else? Uh, corn, right? Corn plants. Um, olive, right? Uh, another one, canola, 
right? These are all produce large amounts of these um, unsaturated triglycerides. And this is the reason why there are so many different types of oils that we can actually use for, um, for cooking, right? So now other uh, types of, um, of fats, pretty much. We've got margarine, right? Margarine is a solid fat. So let's uh, write that down. Margarine is pretty much a solid fat. Right? Uh, and it's actually produced from actually vegetable oils, right? Um, now, margarine will, will actually uh, react um, with hydrogen in a certain way to kind of help produce, um, to, to help in the manufacturing of the margarine. Now, margarine is pretty much uh, usually white uh, when it is produced. However, manufacturers really, the reason why ma um, margarine is actually yellow in color is because food coloring is actually added to make, to give margarine the appearance that it looks like butter, but it's not butter right can't believe it's not butter kind of thing right now uh, animals pretty much they produce large amounts of saturated triglycerides those are the single bonded so animals we produce uh, large amounts of this um, that pretty much occur as um, you know uh, as hard fats right so our lards and, and the fats in butter kind of thing and the thing is though um, researchers have kind of looked at that diets that that have large amounts of saturated triglycerides are actually um, are, 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 are really bad right and they, what they do pretty much um, is they, they clog arteries right um, they pretty much can uh, result in, in, in heart attack and stroke. So again, you want to be, be sure that you watch your intake of these saturated triglycerides. Now, let's look at uh, some others and just kind of touch upon, right? As we said, others, other uh, lipids include waxes, phospholipids, and steroids so now uh in terms of um the fossil let's just touch upon the uh the phospholipids uh pretty much these are lipid molecules that are very similar uh to triglycerides uh however pretty much um it also w w the thing is is that we lose one of the fatty acids and we replace it right we replace it with what we call a phosphate group, right? Um, pretty much so these phospholipids, uh, pretty much really important when looking at the cell membrane, right? So when you're looking at the cell membrane and the phospholipid bilayer, as they call it, right? One end, you know, the outer end of the membrane, we've got these looking, these uh, hydrophilic heads, right? Um, with um, these fatty acids, right, that pretty much spiral inwards, right? So this is pretty much our arrangement of our cell membrane here. And so we're looking at the outside, let's say, of the cell membrane. And maybe here we're looking at the inside of our cell membrane. Now, uh, some other things to kind of touch upon in terms of waxes. They're lipid molecules that are used um, by plants and some animals pretty much um, really as a waterproof coating, right? Waxes are waterproof, right? So, you know, to, to kind of form this waterproof coating as you'd find in, in some, uh, some, some types of fruits. Um, the beeswax uh, in a hive, right? The honeycombs of the hive. Right, are made up of these waxes. And the last one, and we're not really going to talk about it pretty much, are steroids. And steroids are lipid molecules that are made up of four carbon rings that almost kind of give the appearance of the, you know, um, of the Olympic rings, so to speak. But, uh, you know, with one of the rings missing, so to speak. Uh, so you can look that up um, in terms of uh, if you are interested 
in, um, in knowing a little bit more about steroids, but we're not going to look beyond just the fact that they're made up of really four carbon rings and that they are under the category of the macromolecule of lipids.